Welcome to BTL. It is that time of the week again. My name is James Eelsley, and tonight on the show, we're going to be breaking down VAR. Is it good? Is it bad? Do the fans want it? Do the players want it? We're going to dive right in. Before we do, though, we have to get to our top five. Our top five for tonight is a countdown of some of the most controversial VAR moments ever. Take a look. Taking our number five spot on this list is one of the strangest dives you'll ever see. Harry Kane thought he had given Tottenham Hotspur the lead during the first half of their London derby against Chelsea. Having controlled Ryan Sessegnon's cross, Kane slotted the ball past Kepa Aretha Belaga, only to then be penalised for a push on Thiago Silva. As the cross was sent in, the England striker had placed a hand on the back of the Chelsea defender, who threw himself to the floor following the nudge. Some fans felt Silva had been clever to cause the goal to be disallowed, while others felt the decision was harsh, including Kane, who was later seen arguing with referee Paul Tierney in the tunnel. Our number four spot is a stamp from Ashley Westwood. Burnley were lucky not to be reduced to 10 men as they held Arsenal to a goalless draw at the Emirates Stadium. After being beaten to a loose ball by the Gunners' Kieran Turney, Westwood failed to pull out of his attempted challenge and caught the Scottish fullback halfway up his leg. Luckily, the stamp did not injure Tierney, with Westwood initially shown just a yellow card for the foul before it went to VAR review. To the bemusement of the Arsenal fans, though, the VAR review agreed with the on-field decision and Westwood avoided an early bath. Number three goes to Stuart Armstrong and a horror tackle. Another player fortunate to escape with just a yellow card was Southampton's Stuart Armstrong during a draw with Manchester City. Armstrong attempted to challenge Emmerich Laporte as the Spaniard controlled the ball on his thigh. However, he missed and raked his studs down Laporte's thigh. Again, a yellow card was shown before a VAR review for possible serious foul play agreed with the decision of referee Simon Hooper. Following the match, Laporte took to social media to share an image of the nasty gash he was left with as a result of the tackle. Our number two spot goes to Diogo Jota and a forced penalty. With Liverpool narrowly leading Crystal Palace into the closing stages of their meeting, Diogo Jota went down in the penalty area following a collision with Vincenzo Gualta. The challenge went unpunished initially, with Palace given a goal kick before a VAR review resulted in a penalty being awarded. Replays of the incident further added to the anger at the decision, as it appeared Jota moved onto the unrushing goalkeeper in order to initiate the contact. Fabinho stepped up to dispatch the resulting penalty and kill off any hopes of a comeback for the Eagles. And finally, our number one spot is when Matt Doherty avoided a red card. The decision to disallow Kane's first half goal was not the only controversial use of VAR during the match between Chelsea and Spurs. Earlier in the match, Spurs' Matt Doherty avoided a red card for a challenge on Malang Saar that was branded a disgrace by fans on social media. The Irishman challenged Saar as he played the ball out of the defence, catching the youngster with a studs-up tackle that resulted in him stamping on to Saar's shin. With Saar left rolling around in pain, Doherty went unpunished with VAR failing to penalise him after referee Tierney had not even awarded a free kick. Whether you're a supporter or a denier of VAR, stick around until after the break as Bandile and I get into the nitty gritty, all the behind the scenes stuff that go on with the referees after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to BTL. As I said before the break, we're doing all things VAR. We're going to break down some of the most controversial VAR moments, uh, as well as having a look at where VAR is going wrong, where it's going right. As usual, I've brought in Mr. Bandile to join me and break it all down. Mr. Bandile, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, James? I'm good. I'm very well. Great. I'm excited for this. Yeah. We both have different opinions on VAR, Yeah, right? certainly. Certainly. Yeah. Why don't you let the people know where you stand? Yeah, so um, I'm all for VAR. Um, I think that we really do need fairness and equality within the football structure. Um, there's been far too many errors uh, done before, and uh, they resulted in teams winning games that they really shouldn't have. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, if you're a Liverpool fan, you'll remember 
I think it was the 2017-18 season, where we actually had a goal disallowed against City. Turns out that goal cost us the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. So th these things do happen. Yeah. These things do happen. And yes, Liverpool, even, even the previous season, the 2020-2021 season, mm. Liverpool were actually uh, the team that really got the, the, the worst end of yeah. VAR, shall yeah. I say, at least for, for the fans. Uh, mm. That's how they see it, with five disallowed goals. Yeah. But you have to understand, that's... It, it's not like they're cheating you. Mm. It's 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 how the law is, you know. If it's a, if if it's an offside, it's an offside. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I, I I like how you're getting into it already. I want to dive in just really really deeply, and I want to start off um, with something that Scott Parker said uh, when he was still the manager of Fulham. Yeah. A decision went against him. They were playing against Crystal Palace. That game ended one one. It was after the game. All of the media was on VAR. Yeah. Um, and he came out and said, we're trying to make the game so pure and sterile and trying to control every single phase or moment to an absolute T. So that's partly the reason why I'm against VAR, right? Yeah. Is because I, I, I don't like the fact that we're controlling the game to the very last, literally, toenail. We're, we're counting if Andy Carroll's toenail is offside. Yeah. That's, that's where, to me, it gets a little bit... Yeah. I, I, I get the use of it. I just think it needs to be more refined. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's 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 not perfect mm. um, the way it is right now. Mm. But I think we we if 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 we're really going to compare whether it's been better for football or worse, in my humble opinion, I think that it has been better. Um, yes, those small margins mm. are the ones that the referee doesn't see, and obviously VAR is there to eliminate. Um, um, such mistakes where you'll get a, a goal allowed whereas the foot of a player is actually offside. And as you know, the rules of the game, that's offside. Mm. That's offside. There is absolutely zero tolerance for, 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 for offside. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Offside is a very important part of football yeah. because otherwise you just have Salah down that side, Virgil, goal, every game. Exactly. So it's obviously a very important part. But the reason why I say it needs to be more refined is because... It slows down the game way too much for the referee to stop the game, run off to the TV. Or actually, he doesn't even run off to the TV first. He yeah. has to listen to what yeah. they're saying in his ears while they look at his toenail. If they can't decide, he runs off to the TV, has a look, makes his decision. So I think in that whole process, mm -hmm. uh, we're reviewing it and it's back and forth. And I think that's where it needs to be refined. Because in that time, players are now kind of slowly coming out of it while they're waiting for this decision to be made instead of being in the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? No doubt. No doubt. I 100% agree with you uh, in terms of that That sort of process mm. can be a little bit shorter as it does kill the morale of the game. But, I mean, the ref does compensate for it by giving you a little bit of extra time. Mm. Um, so it, it's really not as, as, as straightforward as, as it should be, um, but it is going to get mm. better. But right now, where it is, I believe that it's actually going in the right step, uh, the right direction, rather. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's really great to see for me. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I, wanna, I wanna just, uh, I, I went through a couple of numbers and some stats yeah. for this whole VR thing. I, I, I wanted to, to let you know, and I wanted to see what you thought of this, um, and how it influences your decision yeah. for VAR. Um, during the 2018-19 season in La Liga, VAR interfered in 27% of its games, uh, which is one out of four games. Uh, typically, it should only interfere once. So, essentially, the, the overall sort of intention behind VAR, right? Because mm -hmm. that's a large, a, a, a large amount of games that VAR is involved in. When it first came out, it was introduced as minimal interference, maximum benefit. Yeah. One out of four games. It is a lot. It is a lot. Um, but that only goes to show that there is a lot of incidences that we need to deal with. Mm. Um, incidences that, of course, the referee doesn't see uh, uh, as clear-cut yeah. as they should be. Mm. Even the linesmen themselves. Um, so it, it doesn't really say much about VAR itself, but rather about how the game actually has a lot more instances that we need to analyze and make sure mm. that uh, uh, um, everything is being judged equally. Mm. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about the players? Do you think, so uh, in, in doing research, I'd found out that the amount of red cards and uh, yellow cards given out since the introduction of VAR has decreased. Yeah. Now the players are obviously playing with a mindset of 
okay, we're going to go out there and win. But the back of their mind, there's always going to be, okay, VAR can influence this. Yeah. The ref can influence that kind of thing. You know, so are the players still going out there and, you know, playing to their best? If, if it's actually a, a fact that red cards and yellow cards have decreased? I think they should be. Um, um, they should be. They should not be worrying about mm. VAR. They should be out there playing the exact game that they used to play, right? Of course, as, as a footballer in general, we can't now say because uh, uh, of VAR, now we can't make the tackles that we used to make. Mm. No, because at the end of the day, you need to make those tackles. If the tackle, uh, uh, you can't really time the tackle very well, then that's that's obviously an issue whether there's VAR or no VAR. So the players really need to be out there playing their best game, mm. making sure that, of course, they're also respectful to their opponents as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, we'll, get, we'll, we'll obviously get a good game. Mm. Uh, before we go to the break, I just want to ask you about something, right? So quite recently, there's been a lot happening with VAR, West Ham, Chelsea. Yeah. So much has happened. And the the referees sort of association have actually come out and they've said that they have made a couple of wrong calls here yeah. and there for certain games. But it doesn't, you know, it kind of goes back to the, the, the thing of it's costing teams, sometimes not any games, but leagues or trophies. The the referee association coming out and saying, okay, we, we messed up on that one, mm -hmm. doesn't change the fact that Leicester, West Ham, Barca, whoever it is that lost out with the VAR call have now lost out on three points or have now lost out on the knockout stages of the champions. Yeah. Like, you know? I mean, obviously, there is human error mm. um, when it comes to referees. They, they, they are only human mm. and they can only see so much, mm. um, which is why, of course, the, the, the introduction of VAR then happened. Um, but I believe that, you know, when it comes to certain important games, well, games in general, mm. Um, whether a goal is, 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 is disallowed or not, it's quite simple. Actually, let me put it like this, right? So you have VAR that is there to make sure that there is no inequality, mm. right? Whether a goal, if a goal doesn't stand or rather shouldn't stand, then it definitely shouldn't stand. It shouldn't be a case of, of the ref allowing the goal. Mm. And then you have um, a whole a whole number of fans now going hoo-ha mm. um, about that that goal was actually not a goal mm. so these are the things that we we, we we are sort of eliminating with var yeah and th that's that's how mm. the new evolution of football is right now mm. yeah this is the first ptl show that we've done where we actually don't agree on on what we're talking about usually we're we're pretty uh, yeah. agreeable yeah. together <laughs> um after the break i want to chat about the, the impact of VAR on just the fans themselves. I like that you brought that up. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we dive into a little bit of the 2022 World Cup coming up. I want to see what your thoughts are going into it with VAR. Yeah. Um, they've, they're also evolving VAR, so that, yeah. they, that may be introduced at this World Cup. So we'll have a chat about that after the break. Definitely. After the break, uh, we're going to do some World Cup stuff. We're going to see what the fans think of VAR. Stay tuned. Welcome back to BTL. We're still doing all things VAR. Mr. Madile is still with me. Madile, I want to start. Uh, we're going to dive a bit into what the fans think of VAR. Yeah. I uh, went into Twitter, where everybody says things, okay. um, and I found this tweet that I thought was really, really interesting for this conversation, right? It says, how can you possibly gain an advantage from being a pinky toenail beyond the second to last defender? There used to be an interpretation where benef benefit of the doubt goes, to f goes forward on these tight calls, but now assistant referees have relieved themselves of this and let technology make the calls. Yeah. What do we think? I definitely think that um, I mean of course there isn't sort of an advantage when it comes to your your <laughs> your pinky toe mm. being offside mm. um, but then again the rules are the rules zero tolerance for offsides it doesn't matter whether it's a finger it's mm. a pinky toe you're offside so you don't care how huh? VAR mm. or not if your toes offside you're offside you're offside you're offside okay. plain okay. and simple there's no there's no Oh, but because he's just a little bit, a couple of mm. inches offside, mm. we can allow the goal. No, that's not mm. the case, yeah. 
So going back to the fans, just real quickly, in a country like the UK, mm -hmm. where football is essentially a religion yeah. to a lot of them, yeah. they care deeply, deeply about the sport. Yeah. A lot of them are actually involved in their clubs. Um, y you know, a lot of them are, are not happy with VAR. They say sort of similar things to what I've said on the show today. Yeah. You know, it's ruined the game, it's slowed it down. Yeah. What, what do you say to, to the fans that aren't happy about this? Well, it's, it's quite interesting that you say that because um, there was a poll that was done. Mm. Um, and, and, and the poll said that 36% of supporters aged 18 to 34 actually say that VAR has made football better. Where, um, as, as opposed to, of course, the 29% of, of individuals that are 55 and over mm. um, who actually said that mm. it's worse. Um, so in terms of that, I'd say that the younger sort of generation that are watching football, they're actually giving in to VAR yeah. and, and actually seeing the, the mm. benefits of VAR mm. as opposed to, to, of course, the 55 and over who absolutely prefer <laughs> the old school way yeah. of playing football. Mm. But this is a new evolution now. So we, we, we really have to adapt to it, you know. You know, more and more of these football shows that we do, I realize how old I am probably inside <laughs> because I'm that guy that's like money shouldn't be in football. Yeah, we don't need VAR. I'm that guy. Like, I, so I'm obviously 55. You say, yeah, mm. 55 and <laughs> over. 55 and over. So it could be 65. Who you know? uh, Having a look at the the World Cup, which is coming up. Yeah, that's got VAR. They're also transforming mm. VAR. Um, and I say transforming because it's still sort of being tested now in the Champions League. They have changed the way it looks yeah. and it's now almost self-automated yeah um do we think that's going to have more of a positive impact from a var point of view for the world cup um i think it's going to have a more of an accurate um in terms of decision making because at the end of the day even with the current var that we that we are sort of uh, dealing with mm. at, the, at the moment there is a couple of incorrect uh, calls here and there so i think with this new adapted sort of technology mm. we'll definitely be getting more accurate decisions mm. uh, on the pitch mm. yeah. do you think var needs to be less broad because you know it's you know when it first came out it was only to be used for if I'm not mistaken, offsides and goal decisions. It's, it's been brought in a, a little more recently for a lot more. Yeah, uh, like red cards. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think that's maybe the issue with where VAR is? It's now too broad and they should just focus on bettering the goal line decisions or the offsides? Um, not, not, not necessarily. Um, I think I believe the three main aspects um, in terms of VAR are obviously goals, mm. red cards and penalties. So I think if we just stick to that three uh, sort of sort of mm. important uh, categories uh, of VAR, then we should be good to mm. go. I don't really want to see um, yellow cards now being contested by VAR because now that's really going to slow the game down even more. And we are literally trying to sort of minimize the time that mm. it takes to make these decisions. Mm. Yeah. So speaking of minimizing time, uh, that's one thing that the fans have spoken out about is that this VAR takes way too long yeah. we spoke about it uh, before the break uh, about how the ref has to he's got a whole process essentially yeah. there's the guys at the top it comes through his ear he's got to listen and wait if there's no conclusion he's yeah. got to run off to the side of the screen how, how do we better that how do we speed that process up do we say listen okay you're the referee you get the final say if you think this needs to be AR there's the screen go off to the side of the field make the call or do we just say you in the box you're the assistant referee for this game. That's your call. You make the call and that's how we move forward. I think we can improve this by simply having the ref not uh, 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 having to communicate with the VAR officials mm. on the pitch. I think as soon as it's a VAR call, he can just step away um, and go to the RAA, of course, um, which is his reviewing section, mm. and just go there and speak to, to, to the VAR officials while looking at the actual mm. uh, incident that happened. That could literally save us a good two minutes or minutes, um, which is a lot in, in, in terms of football. Do you see any problems uh, with the World Cup coming up? Do you see any teams possibly losing out on the actual trophy, going home early? Because of VAR. Mm. 
Um, not necessarily. Um, I think if, if, if there's definitely going to be certain calls that are going to be made, they will be justified. Mm. Um, it's not going to be a case of someone was robbed or cheated um, of a certain goal or, or, or given an unlawful red card that mm. obviously impacts the game uh, going forward. So I think we'll definitely see some good uh, uh, um, calls mm. made over, over the World Cup. And of course, as you mentioned, that it is being adapted and there's a new sort of VAR coming our way. Mr. Bandila, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Now, we are going to do a proper, proper World Cup build-up show. I'm very excited for it. We're going to break down all the teams, all the stats, all the players that you need to watch. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you for joining us tonight on BTL. Don't forget to follow us across all social media platforms. We are BTL underscore Sports Connect. And until next time, see you later.